dude, you're on my podcast like a month ago. You had no fucking hair. Now you have hair. I know. I don't know what it. I literally just got a haircut last week too. You should keep the hair because it makes you look younger. Now you now you actually look like you're 26 or 25, whatever you are. How old are you? I'm 26. 26. Yeah, now you look 26. Really? I was gonna go for a baldy. The no. bald baldy makes you look older. Does it? I'm not saying it looks bad. I just think with the hair you look younger. So I look better with hair. I think, speaking as a man who used to have hair, who now long, no longer has hair, keep your fucking hair as long as you can. <laughs> All right. Makes sense. Trust me, because one day you won't be able to grow it back, and you're going to be like, fuck, I should have kept it when I had it. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. <laughs> so uh, we're waiting for Mr. Sister Nino's coming on board with us, too. Okay. I got a, an East Coast episode today. So how are you doing, man? Oh, I'm good. I'm, yeah. I'm real good, yeah. I saw that picture you posted today, man. You look fucking nuts. Yeah, I feel like we're already a lot better than uh, North Americans, so. I feel like your waist got smaller already. How did that happen? I don't, I don't know. I, you... I haven't really, we haven't changed nothing, really. Hey, does Matt Jansen do a lot of probiotic stuff? I had AJ Sims on the podcast, uh, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. And AJ was talking a lot about... Uh, a lot of like live cultures and probiotics and, and uh, sauerkraut and stuff like that. I've never been a big believer in like gut, not that gut health is not, not a believer in gut health. I shouldn't say that. I've never been a big believer in maintaining my gut health perfectly. Yeah. But I'm starting to think that maybe there's a component that I need to pay attention to. Yeah. I mean, he has me taking um, digest aid by revive. I take glutamine in the morning. Um, there's a product called Adifin. Yeah. Uh, which is supposed to help with uh, the gut health. Yeah. So I, I think he, he's pretty big on it. Yeah. Guy, what's up, brother? What's up, man? I thought my beard was looking shaggy and shitty until I saw yours. <laughs> I thought I was fucking ugly until I fucking looked at the screen. <laughs> okay, you just got... This is his first fucking thing out of your mouth, and you can't eat before you came on. You had to eat. You had to wait till you came on. Now I got to hear mm -hmm. more. Now a whole bunch of people are going to complain. Why is I literally guy... just finished eating, so I prepared myself. I'm just joking, guy. Finish your meal, dude. I'm just fucking. Uh, Puad sends the link at fucking seven fifty nine and thirty seconds, and I'm I'm like thinking it's going to be like <laughs> he fucking forgot again, so I'm not. I'm, I can take my time. And then seven fifty nine. I sent the link. I'm like, great. I told you. I told you 8 o'clock. We're right now. Eat your meal. What are you eating? Chicken and rice with a fork. Chicken and rice with a fork. Chicken and hey. rice with a fork. Uh, Nick, do you eat chicken and rice with a fork or a spoon? I eat it with a spoon. Are you serious? You should just end the fucking call right now. All right. Everybody, have a good night. <laughs> I, I, want, I eat everything with a spoon. Really? Yep. Yeah. Isn't it like a big spoon, too? It's a very big spoon. Yeah, you told me you're a weird fucking. Kid. What do you mean, like a <laughs> like a like a serving spoon? Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, it's like a big spoon. Are you? Is it just a shovel more in faster? Is that the whole point? No, I just I like big spoons. <laughs> <laughs> he's a simple. Put that. He's a simple man. He's a simple. You don't man. put that on a shirt. I will. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like big spoons. Yeah, that's fucking funny. Um. So anyway, we're going back to, we were talking about gut health guy. Are you, have you, guy, you've been around for a long time. Have you ever been one to like really, really focus on gut health and probiotics? And it's actually very funny because the, the fact that you're asking me this is funny because I actually just went for a colonic yesterday. Okay. Why is that? What did something happen or you just. I get colonics three to five times a year. And I don't know. I don't think I really spoke. Um, publicly about this but i'll get into why i had to go so i don't know the last time i was on here but i threw my back out really bad yeah. at the end of june yeah and I uh i could barely even fucking walk so i ended up went to the spine doctor and he wrote me an mri well my for some reason my insurance took two and a half fucking weeks to approve it from the time I saw the spine doctor, he put me on oxycodone. Now, I've never taken oxycodone in my entire life. Mm. So I was on it for about two and a half weeks arguing with my insurance company to get me fucking approved for an MRI. Finally got approved for the MRI, got the MRI. I ended up having a third fucking herniation because I usually, I had two, now I have three. I herniated another fucking disc. 
So I got an epidural and the first epidural didn't work. So he kept me on the oxycodone until I got the second epidural, which was um, about a month ago. So I stopped taking an oxy on a Monday night. Mm -hmm. And mind you, the, the bottle said you could take one every four hours. I was taking yeah. one a day. Yeah. One yeah. fucking yeah. pill a day. Yeah. And I stopped taking oxy on Monday. Tuesday, I got the second epidural. Wednesday morning, I woke up. I was driving to my dentist to get my teeth cleaned. Dude, I went into the fucking worst withdrawal that I can, you, you can't even fuck. I, I really? had my dad come to my house, take care of my dog. Bro, I, I lost is, like 15 it, fucking pounds. What withdrawal? Like, what did it feel like? It, the only way I could describe it, every physical and emotional thing happened at, at the same time. Like I would, I would be fucking freezing cold but pouring sweat. I had snot run out of my fucking nose, tears run out of my eyes, shivering. One minute I'd be in a fucking hot bath. Then I would get out, put a hoodie on. Then I'd be fucking pouring sweat. Dude, when I tell you it was the fucking, Can you I know why people do what they do sometimes now, because that was the worst fucking week of my life. So because of that, I have been having such a hard time going to the fucking bathroom. And I get colonics throughout the year just because of all the food I eat. And I don't have a big appetite, so I like to fucking clean the pipes. So I got so constipated from the fucking oxys that I could, I, I would be times, I would wake up four times in the middle of the night, try to go to the bathroom and I couldn't. And yesterday I woke up in the morning, I said, fuck this. I, I can't take this anymore. And I called my girl, Ann, because I know her, um, she owns a place and said, Ann, you got to get me in today. So I went in and literally went in feeling like complete dog shit. And I actually went into like, almost like a mini withdrawal because while the colonic was happening, it sounds weird, but I started fucking profusely fucking sweating and I got extremely nauseous and wow. I've had colonics done a bunch of times yeah. and that never happened. But I left there, came home today. My stomach feels like a fucking million dollars. Wow. I, you know, can you imagine had you taken the fucking one pill every four hours? Bro, I would have fucking, I, I don't, dude, it's, I, I that's nuts, bro. Yeah. I, I, I've never experienced anything, anything, anything like that in my entire life. You know, it's crazy. It's almost like they want you to get addicted because when I tore my tricep and I had surgery, when I got out of surgery, they gave me a bottle of fucking Percocets. Like, it was like the bottle was this big. And the guy's like, you can take one, I don't know. He said, he said take one every six hours or something like yeah, that. It was, for usually every, it was usually one every four to six. Yeah, something like that, right? But there was literally like, I still have the bottle. There's like, there was literally like 50 fucking pills in the bottle. I'm like, I, I think I took half of one the first day, half of one the second day, and I never took it again. I'm like, why did they give me 50 fucking pills? I'm like, are they well, trying to like get people hooked? The like, crazy part was is that I didn't think, it, maybe this is me being ignorant. I thought people got addicted because they abused them. No. I didn't think me taking one pill a fucking day no. would make me physically dependent on it. And then once I started researching it, it said if you take oxycodone mm. from five to seven days is when your body, whether you like it or not, your body is physically then dependent on it. And there's yeah. nothing you can do. You will. Yeah, I, I think often, honestly, I think That's more, absolutely insane, man. I think more often than not, it's like people are following the instructions on a bottle and they get hooked. Yeah. Because yeah. like, like I said, imagine you had taken one every four hours. You'd be fucked right now. Well, you know what? It's like weird because they gave me weird side effects too. Like I would sweat very oddly. And then like I was sweating from my armpits and I never sweat from my armpits. And I, I would get so itchy. I do I, I scratched the skin off the top of my foot. Hmm. It, it fucking just, it's just weird, weird shit, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So going back to what we were talking about though. In between your colonics, do you do anything for gut health or are you kind of rely um, on the colonics too? Digestive enzymes, probiotics. Yeah. Um, I take uh, greens and I take a green um, a greens pill. Plus I take um, um, juiced up, or which is like a green and vegetable uh, drink. And I have a juicer um, in my kitchen as well. So I'll juice mm -hmm. sometimes too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just think that's probably the one thing that, that bodybuilders don't do. Yeah. A lot of is pay attention to their gut because if it was up to me, I would eat one meal a day and be completely fine. Like I'm, I'm dieting and this is, I got to eat another meal after this. And I'm like, fuck. I don't but let me, that. but let me ask you guys this. So, so Nick in the off season, maybe this is too much information. So I don't know. You don't have to answer if you don't want to, but in the off season versus contest, okay. like, like going to the bathroom, for example, when I'm, when I'm pre-contest, 
I don't feel like I have any issues with my gut because everything's so regular and so perfect. So I'm like, why do I need, if my body is taking care of everything, everything I'm giving it, like I'm eating chicken and rice and all the vegetables and egg whites and eggs and you're dieting, you know, the dieting diet. Why do I need, if my body's processed everything, everything perfectly, why do I need this extra shit? Why do I need the extra probiotics? Why do I need the extra, like it's my body's already doing the job. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, for me, I, I, I just take everything year round. So, so just helping with you. Yeah. Yeah. What are you saying guy? You had your hand raised there. Because I agree with what you're saying, but it's the same concept as if you're driving a car and you, your oil is supposed to get changed every 15,000 miles, your car might be running good at 30,000 still doesn't mean the oil ain't dirty. And it's got to get changed. Uh, yeah. But our like bodies, because like, like normally the difference is I'm like the, a dog. Like normally I eat shit, eat shit, eat shit. Like I'm like bing, bang, boom, like fucking clockwork. Mm. And I'm like that all year round. But just because that's like that, that doesn't mean that there's not stuff stuck in the intestinal wall and fucking garbage in there that doesn't need to get flushed out. I see what you're yeah. saying. Okay. Okay. You know, because um, you, you're eating a bodybuilding diet now, but fucking, we don't eat a bodybuilding diet all year. Burgers, fries, sushi, fucking ice cream, pizza. Uh, no, and that, but that's what I meant. But that's what I meant. The difference between off season pre contest, right? Like pre contest is like you're putting premium gas and and the best oil possible in your car. Yeah, but you're also putting too much because as bo our our bodies aren't meant to fucking take all this food in. So I see what you're saying. Okay, so just to help the body process, exactly. Like giving it, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, Nick, how's your prep going otherwise, man? Like I said, you look like you shrank your waist a bit just in the last couple of weeks. I've noticed you put some pictures up and I was like, this guy's fucking waist came down already. Are you doing anything specific for it? Nothing different that we did for North America. We're just kind of continuing the process, really. Um, just keep it. He's been, Matt's actually been here in Florida with me for a majority of the time. Yeah. He just went home, um, Saturday and he's going to come back again uh next saturday well the saturday coming up so he's been able to keep a, a real eye on me so mm -hmm. at, every day it's it's been different do you think it's just the length of the diet because you're dieting longer you're starting oh, for sure. yeah and the, the longer the diet is the, the the smaller your waist should get yeah you know and i just think that's what's happening at this point what about what are you doing are, are your cheat meals nasty or are your cheat meals really small because i know you said you're not a food guy we we don't since this entire prep we've only had one cheat meal. You know? So what do what do you um, so what do you guys just do refeeds like clean food? No, he actually let me go have. I went to this place called Burger Fry in Florida. Okay, and he let me get a two doubles and a large fry. When was that? Uh, Saturday. That was your first cheat since like you started prep for the North America. Yeah, probably since. I was like 12 weeks out from North Americans, yeah. <laughs> wait, wait. I ate that. I ate that probably in literally two minutes. It was gone. <laughs> I feel so bad for you right now, man. I'm like, holy fuck. <laughs> so wait, I, I'm still confused at the, at the at the part where he said, "You're how are you 300 pounds and you're not a food guy." <laughs> Well, he doesn't he, well because I had him on the podcast like a month ago. We talked about it, and and Nick said that he's not like you said. You don't crave stuff that much, right? No, when I went to off season, I eat. A, Matt has. I, we eat a shit ton of food, so I don't really ever crave, you know, burgers and fries and things like that. Yeah, like when I say food guy, guy, when I mean like when somebody's a food guy, they're like craving fucking shit all the time. Oh, oh. You mean, oh. He means I like, like, you don't he eat a like lot. Himself. Yeah. So you've gone. So you've gone like a long time with no cheats, and I think I actually think that's the reason why your stomach keeps coming down. So, and then even your cheat that you had was just burger and fries wasn't anything. Wasn't really a big deal. No, but it was fantastic, though. Does it make you want to – are you kind of like, when I cheat, I want to cheat again the next day, or is it gone? You just That's it. Oh, no, I, I want to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was like, even more over here. I'm like, yeah, right? oh, shit, here See? we go. <laughs> I had uh, I had it's like that metabolism kicks in, and you're just fucking, like, can't stop it. Yeah. Well, it's actually physiological. This is the part – I had Lane Norton on my podcast uh, a while back. And I remember I asked him, I said, you know, when people eat sugar and eat a lot of like sugary junk foods and stuff like that, the next morning when I wake up, usually I'm like, I want to fucking have more sugar. Like, I feel like I'm craving it again. And he goes, no, that's just in your head. And I, that's not true because they've done studies that say the brain, it's like sugar acts like cocaine where the brains, the sugar, 
the brain is stimulated by the sugar. Yeah. And that's why you want to go back to it. For sure. So that's why I asked when you had that cheat, like, was it harder the next day to get back to your program? No, not the next day, but right after. Yeah. Yeah. I was, yeah. I was ready to, I probably could have had another three more doubles at that <laughs> point. <laughs> what was the workout like the next day after a cheat? Oh, I did quads and it was amazing. Yeah. Are you still, I, pro are you still killing heavyweight or no? For sure. Yeah. You're not, you're not taking it easy. Like, even though you're only like a couple weeks out now, four weeks, three weeks no. out. No, no. What are you squatting right now? I don't squat. Oh, sorry. You don't squat, but you're hack squat. What are you hack squatting? Well, I actually switched. So this gym I go to has what's called like a, uh, it's called a true squat. Yeah. That machine is absolutely insane. Okay. I haven't seen so it. Let me, it, I'm going to try and look it up while you're talking. I have it on my Instagram actually. All right, um, let me, I'll see if I can find it. You keep talking. <laughs> and I went up to about four plates on there, and that it, it just murders the fuck out of your quads, man. True. I'm trying to think. Is it like a pendulum type squat? Kind of, but you're not on an angle like a pendulum. So this is Nick's page. How far down is it? It should be too far. You'll see it. Uh, keep going. Keep going. Maybe check, hit that one. Which one's that? Go up, go hit the picture. I think I might have videos on that. No? Yeah, this yeah, thing? this one right here. Yeah, oh, That's yeah. fucking sweet, man. I've never seen that before. It's like a fucking vertical hack squat. It's, it's awesome. Hard to tell what's going on because the guy that's squatting his legs are so tiny, you can't see what the fuck Look. <laughs> <laughs> Look at your fucking legs, dude. What the dude, fuck? It's so stupid. It doesn't even make sense. No, it doesn't make sense at all. But that machine is fucking amazing, man. Oh, Dude, that's like a back. Like you could probably do a whole workout on that, just that machine. Yeah, right. yeah. That looks really, really fucking cool. It's you know like what that reminds me of? It, you know the lying uh, sled um, horizontal leg press machine? Yeah, yeah. It almost reminds me of a vertical version of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know yeah. exactly what you're talking about, guy. Yeah. That's pretty fucking badass. That, I bet you that saves your back. That's something I got to get in my fucking gym. Is that, is that an old thing? What this? I, yeah, it's pretty old. Yeah, it looks old. All the old shit's better, man. So, bro, I, uh, p and people will disagree all day long. No, man, the old shit's better. Look at this. Look at this waist. Bringing this waist in. That's good. I don't man. know what's more shocking: how small his waist is, or how fucking far he pulled down in the front of those pants. Yeah, what's up with that, Nick? Why are you trying to show us your junk? You just... <laughs> well, I gotta make sure everyone gets the full view of the waist. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's funny. Look at this, though. This is pretty. This is good. Good for you, man. Um, his, his peak from the back this are, right here. Are, are literally like Marcus Rule esque. They're I know. I know. Ridiculous. I know. It's crazy. Well, it's going to be interesting, man. It's going it's to be really? interesting to see what, what happens in a couple weeks. Um, so, Who, guy, you're, you're doing that show. Me and Nick are doing that show. I know you two idiots are doing it. Who else? <laughs> uh, Justin uh, Rodriguez is doing it. Akeem Williams. Uh, Akeem Williams is doing it. Josh I think, Wade. Is Max Charles jumping in or no? I I haven't heard nothing. No. It was Sergio. Uh, is it, uh, Sergio it? I think Sergio's doing it too. I think Sergio needs the Sergio points. Sergio was jumping in. Sergio's got to win or get. I think he needs more points at least anyway because I think he's only top three points could get to go on right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think, aren't they doing like top two or three from each from the bodybuilding goes to the O now? No. No, only, that's only for the Spain. Yeah, Spain. Oh. So the Spain pro gets the top three, get to go to the Olympia. That's why Big Ramy went there. He didn't want to battle. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Nick's talking shit already. I'm, I'm, I'm just Nick's kidding. Not, not, no, you're not. No, you know, no, you're, not. <laughs> no, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> Nick, Nick is like the white Akeem Williams. He's like that fucking freak show. Like I Akeem. don't know. Yeah, I, you know what? I can see that. Except if those two went on stage, back, it would be like a fucking meal on stage. Isn't that crazy? I'm <laughs> gonna have to him and fucking Akeem. I'm gonna have to stand Akeem's on stage. Huge. And Nick's, Nick, Nick is huge. Hey guy, I'm gonna have to stand on stage with fucking Nick and Akeem. They look I like my fault. I didn't. That's not, you sign that contract. Not but me. but it could be interesting. <laughs> but, but wait a minute, it could be interesting because. The opposite of Nick and Akeem is me and Justin. So, Justin's pretty big, though. 
Uh, I don't know. Not, no. not when they stand next to fucking you. Not two. not you. Not he's not thick like you and you and Akeem are. Like I have a similar shape to to Justin. He's probably bigger than me now. I've lost some size, so you, but you're gonna run into what I run into. I'm never gonna be the biggest guy on stage. So if I'm I'm I have to be peeled out of my mind, and pray that the judges go for conditioning, and that's you, what you know what my favor. You know what's interesting is it could come out where Sergio benefits from all of it because, because he's kind of he's, he's in the middle of the road. He's, of a, he's a cross of both parties, right? So it could be interesting that way. Isn't it interesting breaking down a show that you're entering, Nick? <laughs> kind of. Like, Nick's like, like, Nick's like, you're all fucking dead. It's like, <laughs> I'm it's kicking like, all your asses. <laughs> it's like we're doing a we're doing a Chicago Pro broke breakdown, and two of us are actually in the show. Um, <laughs> no, but I I think I can be objective, even though I'm doing the show. I don't. I think. Uh, God, you're peeled, bro. No, no, I'm not worried about. Listen, I'm not worried about placing or you're anything peeled, like that. Though. That's not. I'm. I'm getting there. I, I still have a little bit more to go, but I just like. I just like thinking about it objectively and like taking myself out of it. I do think Sergio has a good cross of the size, the shape, the, the size conditioning. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He kind of bring. He kind of brings a little bit of everything. So I think Sergio would be the, the. And he, I mean, obviously, he's got his placings to back him up. So I mean, he's already shown that he can. He can place well and do well. So. Sure. I think Sergio is the guy to beat if I had to pick somebody out of the show so far, only because. We haven't seen you stand next to anybody, Nick, so I can't pick you yet. No, uh, no, no, that's fine. You know, yeah. that's, that's why I think the show is going to be really interesting to see where I stand. You know? That's exactly it. It's really exciting to see somebody come in that hasn't – well, I mean, like, when you're standing there by yourself or you're standing there on the amateur stage, everybody looks at you and goes, holy fuck, that guy should be a pro. Like, why is that guy not a, not a pro? So now yeah. it's really interesting because we finally get to see you stand next to the pros that's and see and exactly. see what's what. So, so that's, that's, that's the exciting part for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, guy, what's going on? You're dieting for the Olympia. Yeah, that show. That big show, the one that they call that they call the Olympia. Are you gonna? How are you gonna do the two twelve, man? Are you gonna crack the top five, top three? What are you gonna man, do? I, uh, do you care anymore? Is it just because you want to be great, or what? Wait, what? Well, I mean, sometimes, like, is it because you want to bring your best, or is it because you actually have a placing in mind that you want? Um, I, I always, listen, I, my, the goal is always to win and you gotta be delusional. You gotta be delusional to not think that, but, um, you know, I know that from what I went through and, and the injuries and the issues, like my physique might not be, um, the best it's ever been, but, um, I started doing stuff after I saw, I saw a neurosurgeon last week, um, for my back because I was debating that I was, did it, I think this was a strong possibility that this was going to be my last year and I was going to keep it to myself. Yeah, uh, but that's not the case. So, um, my days now consist of literally trying to keep my back um, strong. So I, I literally wake up in the morning and I do cardio, and then I um, stretch for. for I, and I'm soaking wet by the time I'm soaked more from stretching than I am from doing cardio. And then mm. I eat, and then I go right to physical therapy for my back and my shoulders. And then I come home, eat another two meals, go to the gym. So my next 12 weeks is going to be like my own little bodybuilding camp. And I think if I continue to do the little things, um, because I look at somebody like Kamal who won the 212, yeah. and I think I have more of a similar structure to that than mm. somebody like a Derek Lunsford. Yeah. Um, so I feel like, and, and Kamal wasn't the biggest guy on stage when he won the 212. But do you think, but do you think Kamal, and, and I'm asking you to judge people that you're going to be sitting on stage with. I know this gets uncomfortable for people, but. No, I, I, I am, nothing gets uncomfortable for me. That's true. You are a guy. Do you, do you, do you think, do you think Kamal is better than Derek Lunsford? Well, in if they were both at their best or what was on stage? Yes, no, 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 no. Just, let's say they both show up 100%. If they're both yeah. on their A game, I would have Derek easily. Okay, okay, good. So yeah. we agree that we agree. But, but I can say this, and Derek's bigger than me, but I think me at my best, standing next to the past two Derek's that we've seen, I think I would blow Derek out of the water. Well, if he doesn't show yeah. up, in, if he doesn't show up in shape, yeah. yeah. shows up. He and I and every time people always think I bash Derek and I don't because I, I the kid is a fucking an amazing bodybuilder. He yeah. just has to get figure his shit out, whatever that is, for yeah. looking the way he looks. Because the day of the show, he looks very like sucked down, stringy, flat, and watery, like yeah, a whole, like a I, whole combo. Can I say? Can I ask you something? Because you're you know I'm not as familiar with two twelve and getting into weight and all that stuff. 
the only familiarity I have with it, with it is John. Meadows looks better at 225 than he does at 212, right? Yes. But he would never compete as an open guy because he'd get crushed. Yes. So he would suck down to 212, and then he would look like not his best, and he would go on stage and not do well, and he'd be unhappy. Is Derek Lunsford, when I look at Derek Lunsford, I have no idea how he makes 212. And I'm like, is he looking bad because he's trying to get weight off that he shouldn't be getting off? No. And I'm, I know I'm going to answer this um, as a matter of factly, <clears throat> because when I did Tampa last year, which was in July, August, August, August yeah, that was maybe, I think it was around six weeks out. Yeah. Derek told me, at that point, he was actually below the weight and he could make 212 the next day and was debating doing the show. So to me, no, he does not. That, lose can, that be, can, can that be true? Uh, you can get him on the fucking show. No, no, and no, 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 no. I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not saying he didn't say <laughs> that. I'm not saying he didn't say that to you. I'm saying, could he have been fucking with you? Because no. it, it seems like there's no way he would be under 212. No, it's like I, Kevin. I English. feel like Kevin. Derek should be over. Yeah, Derek should be open. I think so, too. I think Derek should be open, too, but it's like Kevin English. Like, Kevin had, like, muscle that just hung off his bones. He had, like, hollow bones. Yeah, yeah. How do you think, Nick, Nick, how do you think uh, Derek would do in open? Like, let's, let's, say, let's, say Derek, let's say Derek did Chicago or, or Spain. How do you think he would do? Because, honestly, he'd be giving up, like, 30 pounds at, at least. Well, as an open? Yeah. I think he'd do really well. Really well, well as in really well as in what? Top three, top five, top ten? I give him top three. You think Derek Lunsford would be top three in Chicago if he was an open guy? I do. I could probably see that too, actually. I don't think he could beat Sergio. I don't think he could beat you. I don't know if he'd be top three, because I don't know if he could beat Justin. I don't want to put myself in the mix just because I don't like doing that. I don't know you if don't he think could think he could be Justin. I think he could beat Justin. Well, if Justin brought his stomach in a little bit from New York, Justin's pretty fucking hey, let impressive. Me ask you, wait, let me ask you a question. What are we basing Derek can beat Justin off of? Because Derek couldn't beat fucking Kamal and the Olympia showing up how he looked. We're just basing it on his shape. and Because I'm, what I'm, I'm what saying my, if, Derek brought this, if Derek brought the package from the O to an open Chicago show, he would not do well. No, no, no. What, I'm, what I'm basing my premise on is if he was able to just keep his weight the where it should be, and he came in in shape at like 225 or something. Yeah, but I don't Derek think looks his best though. at like three weeks out. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. But I, I still don't think – I think he'd be giving up a lot of size to Justin. And Justin's got nice shape too. It's not like – because Derek's, Derek's benefit is that he's got nice shape, but so does Justin. But Justin's going yeah. to outweigh him by – but Justin's going to outweigh him by 25 pounds. You know what I mean? Like Justin probably goes on stage at 245, 255. I mean, you, yeah, it makes sense. But then you look at, you know, going back to 212, you look at Sean Clarita. Everyone outweighs him. Yeah, but he can't stand. And he's top with, three in Olympia. Where was he? Did he play third at the Olympia? Yeah. Oh. Wow. Yeah, I mean, there's. Arguably, some... arguably could have been second, in my opinion. So, yeah, I guess. I mean, I, you're right. I mean, weight doesn't say everything. I just don't know if Derek could beat Justin. He I mean, I'll make a statement and say this. I could have had Sean probably winning. And, it, and, and with that said, there were so many fucking great guys in that 212 class that shit the fucking bed. For sure. That, that's why a lot of guys were able to play. That's why Kamal won. That's why fucking Sean took third. That's what, like, I, Sean shouldn't even – I think Sean should, should have been second bar none. But that, you know, that's why you saw – like, don't, like, don't bang on the table. Don't bang on the table. Oh, well, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, because there's audio. Because the audio version, people are listening, right? <laughs> um, guys like Nicholas Vlad. Um, I know John Jewett took fourth. You had Sammy Al Haddad, David Henry. Um, hey, guy. Rea, who I thought was fucking peeled out of his guy. mind. I mean, they were like, Eduardo, probably, in my opinion, was the most overlooked guy in the 212 class. Guy, why are guys in the 212 not coming in shape if. I thought the whole point of getting down in weight would help them. I mean, I thought everybody would have to be in shape because they they have to get down to a certain weight. Wouldn't that wouldn't that mean wouldn't that mean that they'd be in shape because they have to get there? I think what people did the past two years, and this is my opinion, and I obviously wasn't there because mm. I haven't competed at the O in the past two years. Yeah. Is that I think they were hyping up Derek Lunsford 
Um, they were kind of grooming him as the next Mr. Olympia. And yeah. I think if you look at Derek, he's a big fucking kid. Oh, I see where you're going with this. A lot of the guys were like, well, Derek's one of the fucking front runners and he's a big motherfucker. So I got to be in order to stand next to him. I got to be a big motherfucker. So mm. a lot of people, instead of staying in their lane and doing what they do to look their best, they try to play, play his game. Yeah. You can't do that. You got to play your own game. How many Olympias have you done guy? This will be seven, seven Olympias. Good for you, man. That's a fucking, awesome. that's a, that's a feather in your cap for sure. Yeah, I don't. What, it's funny, like you say what's that. the what's the show? Well, I know I say that it doesn't mean a lot to you, but I, like I said, I've told people before this. I've qualified four times and I only went once, and that's probably my only regret of my career. Is I wish I would have gone all the times, even if I would have took last every single time, yeah. because there's a lot of fanfare and why didn't you go? Things. Because because I never felt good enough. You know how you know like you know okay it's it's called uh, it's called fear. <laughs> you know you know um. You know, you, you ever meet the guy in the gym who like looks awesome and I'm like, Hey, are you going to compete? And the guy's like, I'm not big enough yet. And that guy, and that guy never gets on stage. Yeah. I think it was almost that kind of symptom where I was like, I qualified for the show, but I don't think I'm going to win. So I don't want to go and just fucking place. I, I, I had this, I mean, I felt the same way because I was, but what I had in the back of my head, I was always like, Oh, not going to be a good bodybuilder. Not going to ever turn pro. Not going to ever win a show. Not so it's like things just kept. So I was just like, I'm just going to keep trying and see what happens and whatever. You, you know? want to know? You want to know the truth is this is this is going to be a huge revelation to a lot of people. Which and this will probably get used against me by some troll somewhere down the road. But this is an actual fact: is sometimes when your stock is high, you don't want to go do a show and get spanked and then have your stock drop. Hundred percent. Right, like Nick, I'll yeah. give you t uh, Nick. Let's take you for example, right? And I'm not saying yeah. this is going to happen to you because you're you're a good bodybuilder and you're confident and you know what you're doing. But let's say, for example, you just won the North Americans. So the whole world is like Nick Walker is going to be a fucking sensation, right? Yeah. And then you do Chicago and you take seventh, and it's a bust, and people are like, ah, oh, fuck. And then your stock, uh, you're, Trey Brewer. Yeah, your stock, Trey Brewer, Trey. right? <laughs> and right. your stock, your stock goes from here and it goes and it hits the fucking yeah. tank. So my calculation in my mind was always, and I'm not saying this is, this is not why I didn't do it, but it's probably factored into my decision. I didn't want my stock to drop. I was like, okay, I qualified. I'm on a high. I'm just going to kind of stay there and ride it out. Yeah. And then I, there was obviously other factors that played into it, but that was probably part of the decision-making factor because, you know, you're going to go there and you're not going to be, I was like, I'm going to go there. I'm not going to be in the top 10. I might be 10th. I might be eighth. That's, uh, see that, so that's what Nick, Nick, that's what you're going to learn is like whether you're at the top or in the middle of the pack or whatever you'll you can like the way Fuad's talking you might be like oh how does he know that because it would, at at when you've been doing it as long as us we i bet you if you put some of the veteran guys in a room we could probably all tell you very closely what the top 10 of the Olympia are going to be without even just by having the names in front of us. Yeah. There would be a couple guys that you could like shuffle, but, exactly. but for exactly. the most part, you would have the 10 picked out. Yes. Yeah. So I was always like, okay, I'm going to go and I'm going to be 12th. And it, it was a, it was a shitty thing. Cause now looking back, I'm like, I probably should have went and been 12th because it still would have been awesome. Like, and that's why I'm saying that to, to you guy, even though like seven times is amazing, even though, you know, what's your highest placing at the Olympia third, yes. fourth, Sixth. Sixth? Yeah. It does, doesn't, but it doesn't fucking matter because, like, when your career is done and you've closed the book, you're like, I did the Olympia seven fucking times, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's pretty fucking awesome. So what can Nick expect uh, to walk onto the Olympia stage if he gets there? What can, what can he expect his first time out, Guy? Can you describe that for him? Yeah, it's going to be surreal. Be well, it's, you're, you're going to be backstage with people that you looked up to and that you like watched and paid attention to and idolized if you, you know, I like me when I was, yeah. no, no, I'm not talking about like me saying when I was growing up, like when I was backstage in my first Olympia and there was fucking like branch and fucking Jay and like, this yeah, that's it's, it's fucking <laughs> crazy. Like you're just sitting there and it's like, I used to look like read the magazines with these guys and watch the battle for the O's. And now I'm like sitting backstage and like you're with trying these guys now the, the, the your first Olympia will be the first and only time you're kind of like fanboying backstage. Yeah, yeah. that happened to me. After that, yeah. well, first Olympia, 
you're going to be like, okay, I got the, I'm just glad to be here bug out, which everybody has. And you're going to be yeah. after that is going to be like, now I'm here to fuck shit up. Mm -hmm. Right. But that first one, you're like, oh, this is, but I want to ask, I want to ask Nick, cause I feel like the landscape of bodybuilding is a little bit different. Yeah. Cause I know Nick, you're, you're like one of your heroes is Cutler and like, yeah, yeah. Do you really have, and you know, Phil is gone now and Kai is gone now. And like, do you really have any heroes? Like, I'm sure there's some guys that you look to, but is there any really heroes at the Olympia that you kind of like, most of those guys are kind of gone, no? They are. So like for me, like I, I watched a lot of your videos when I was younger. I watched a couple, a lot of Flex Lewis when I was younger, but that, that was really it, you know, beside the ones that are out of the Olympia now. I yeah. mean, I watched a lot of Phil Heath. Um, but like, that's why I, I wanted you to do the show specifically, just because I watched a lot of your videos. Yeah, yeah. So to stand on stage next to you is going to be cool, you know? Yeah. But like at the, Olympia, um, at the Olympia, there's nobody. Like, let's say you win Chicago and you move on. Yeah. I don't know, is, I don't know if you're going to have the thing that guy's talking about, are you? Uh, listen, so especially with my mindset and how my mentality is, I'll probably fanboy for a good five to ten minutes, and then I'll realize <laughs> what, what, what the fuck I'm here to do. Oh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I know I will never win my first Olympia. It's not going to happen. I probably won't win my second, my third, whatever. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I'm there to, 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 to win. Like, that's the mindset that I have. Yeah. And that's yeah. what I'm always going to have. I like that. I like that. It's going to be exciting, man. A couple of weeks. Um, let's get into yeah. some questions, guys. We've got a, a whole bunch here. People are fucking furious. I put this up like <laughs> last, last last week, and I've been in prep, and I'm just tired, and I haven't got around to it. So you did. I, I remember seeing that. I'm like, you yeah. Didn't do it yet. <laughs> I was putting. It's, it's, you know what happened? I was putting out like a video every fucking day, and then I started. I increased my anti-estrogens. Yeah. And all, and, all, and all of a sudden, I was like, I don't want to get off the couch. I don't nope. want anybody to talk to me. I don't want to fucking move. So we, we all get there. It's all right. Isn't it crazy? You think it's like the body fat or the carbs, but it doesn't nothing fuck me until I increase my anti-estrogens. Yeah. Yep. Huh. Um, okay. Let's get into it. Would you rather eat pancakes with Frank's red hot or chicken and rice with Hershey syrup? Chicken and rice with Hershey, Hershey syrup. Yeah, no doubt. Right. That's a simple one. Who the fuck wants to put Frank's Red Hot on pancakes? Not me. Um, compete first at, at your first show natural or take PEDs and place higher if you're trying to chase that pro card and get there as soon as possible. So I think he's asking, is it better to compete at, your, at a show natural or is it better just to start doing what you got to do to get to your ultimate goal? No, I, I think you should always try and reach your genetic potential first. What do you think? What do you think, guy? I think, first of all, A, it depends on the fucker's age. Well, that's yeah. true. He's smart. Um, but I, I think people see uh, what he said, I disagree with. He's worrying about chasing a pro card. He never competed, never done a show, never qualified for nationals, never did a national show. But his goal is to be a pro. His goal should be to win a, a bodybuilding show first. That's a good point. True. Very, Very true. Point. Yeah. Okay, so, but let's say – let's say this guy's goal, ultimate goal is to become a pro bodybuilder. And he says, I got to win this first show and see how I do. Is it better for him to just do it natural? Or is it better for him to say, you know what, these guys are going to be doing, I'm going to be doing gear one day anyway, so I might as well start now. I don't think you learn your body until you do it naturally and push your genetic potential to its limits. And then if you want to put an ad in PEDs, it, that, that's your choice. But I think starting gear at an early age when your genetic potential isn't even close to being reached yet, I think is silly. Nick, how, when did I you think, start? I, I think it'll kill the longevity of your career. Yeah. And Nick, when did you start? Did you train natural for how long before you started? Uh, well, I started training serious when I was probably 15. Um, and I started PDs when I was 18. So three years, that's a good time. Guy, what about you? How long did you train natural before you started? Dude, I didn't start till I was like, and the end of college. Jesus Christ. So, um, I, funny, like I was, I, I had this conversation with, uh, I trained with a kid yesterday in my gym, was 19. Yeah. And he was telling me he was on like tests. And, I, and it was the crazy part is, is that when I was um, in high school. Wait, wait, hold on. Time out, time out. 
guy, you, you trained with a kid that was 15, but you can never train with me? No, I said he was 19, you fuck. <laughs> or 19? How come you never trained well, with you me? You said you want to do Jay's TV. I said, let's go. When? Where? <laughs> you always bailed on me, man. <sighs> Called out, called out. Read, hold on. on show me the, show. the text message. Show me the text message. This is good I TV. I, I like this. bring it up on my phone, but. <laughs> we were supposed to train the one time, and there was one time that I couldn't. But we trained. We, didn't we train the day you were here with fucking Matt? No, nah, that shit doesn't fucking count. No, I'm man. saying, we but we. Arms. Yeah, what, arms what, doesn't what count. Train? Arms I'm doesn't sorry. count. Wait, train, like, you wait, no, wait, you asked me to train and drive to fucking Belmar. Or not Belmar, Wild, uh, no, no, in Wildwood. That's three hours from me. I would have drove right to you. Whose idea was to drive to Wildwood? I never you said, said you Wildwood. want to come train with me at Attilus. I was like, no. I don't remember that part. Yeah, that's the one I was like, I'm not driving three hours. All right, to All right. And you guys are going to hash this I would have came to you, though. You're just Whatever you cool. want, bro. Whatever you want. Well, I'm not now. I'm in fucking Florida. Oh, you're in fucking Florida now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So well, hold on. So let me finish. Go so back what to I'm your story. Is, the guy was saying that he took um, – because he trains at my gym. He just wanted to work out with me. I was like, yeah, you can jump in. So he's telling me he's taking tests. He's like, oh, he's like, you. I go, dude, I said, no lie. When I was in high school – and this is God's honest truth. I didn't even know what steroids were. The biggest thing I remember in high school was Androstein. Remember the stuff like Mark McGuire took? Yeah, yeah. Like that yeah, was like yeah. steroids to me. Yeah, yeah. Like that was like – it, it, like top of the line, like scary, like you're flirting with the bad stuff. I didn't hear anything about steroids till I was actually in college. Um, I did everything the wrong way. I, I did. I the day I started bodybuilding was the day I started doing gear. Which was when? Like, I was just shy of twenty. See, I didn't even start. I bodybuilding. started when I was eighteen. Yeah, but I but I'm saying like I didn't start lifting. Like I started lifting. Like, oh, you started when training, I started because I used to do like just circuit training and like cardio and shit because I was trying to stay from keep from being a fat guy. And then when I finally decided to start lifting like a bodybuilder, I was like, well, got to get on some gear, got to fucking do it all at the same time. Okay. And yeah, I picked yeah. the, I picked the show and I kind of did everything just fit together. I did it all together. So okay. I'm probably the wrong guy to ask because I'm doing exactly what you said not to do. I, I did exactly what you guys said not to do, but the cautionary tale is that pro I think that a lot of the injuries I have and stuff are because I didn't take enough time training naturally before getting on gear. I would disagree. You think so? No. I just had this conversation. I just had this conversation no. with uh, Josh Lenarowitz. You did, yeah. I read, I and we were we were that. talking about how if you train longer naturally, you're probably less susceptible to injury later on. No, it's because you're taught. Look at the guys you're talking about, Fuad. You're talk and I'm banged up too. You, me, Josh, Branch, Ronnie. There, you take the guys that don't train like that. There's there's uh, more guys that don't train like that than guys like Nick. Like Nick, like Nick's an anomaly. Nick handles weight like for perfect form, slow control time. I, I've never seen anything like that. Yeah, but yeah. like you want to talk about like the old school hardcore training guys like Jose Raymond, Derek Farnsworth, me. You, Ronnie, Branch, fucking, uh, like, all those guys are banged the fuck up. Yeah, I guess. I guess. Because we trained a certain way because that's just how we were built and that's how we were yeah. programmed. You take guys like Dexter, like Roden. So you like don't think – so, it, so wait like a minute. Kai. I get it. You don't think, you don't think having a, a couple, two, three, four years of natural training first would have strengthened tendons and got my body more primed for being enhanced? No. I think it would have helped a little bit, but I think if you would have done what you did and trained differently, that, that those injuries wouldn't have happened anyway. Yeah, I see. Okay. I okay. Okay. Uh, next question, Nick Walker versus Hunter. Who you got? Nick, you can't Nick answer. Walker. Nick, you can't answer. Uh, <laughs> Guy, Nick Walker versus Hunter. Who you got? It, I would have Nick on size, Hunter on lines and shape. So I, depending on what you like. I have to see them next to each other. It's it's compelling. Hunter has very gorgeous lines. He's very like Flex Fluids esque. He's got gorgeous lines. He's, so, he's, you have, you're like, so you have a master, yeah. and you have you have like a Dorian and a Flex Wheeler. Well, I wouldn't go that. I wouldn't go that. I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't go that far. No, no, no. Yeah, Flex Wheeler is really a mass monster and a nice physique. I got I got what you're saying, but Nick's Nick's not. 
I think sometimes if people, and I, Nick, I'm going to talk about you like you're not here. I think sometimes, <laughs> I, <laughs> I think sometimes when people say the term mass monster, they mean it as far as like that guy looks like a fridge, right? Like people used to talk about Jay, like Jay looks like a fridge. Like he's not like he's square. He's not pretty to look at whatever. Right. I don't think Nick has that problem. I don't think Nick's a fridge. No, he doesn't have a. He's but that's a, what I'm saying. So even though even though Hunter's lines are prettier, the aesthetics of Nick is not that far off. No, no, that's why I said lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. I'm just. I, trying didn't, to, I didn't say his shape and structure and symmetry. I said yeah. his actual like the actual lines. Like yeah, lines yeah. in Hunter's legs are very. Flesh. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got you. I got but, you. Like I'm talking about physical lines. I got what you're saying. Lines. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, I can agree with you there. I can agree with you there. So who would win? I think you need to see them next to each other, right? Because it, de it depends how much size Hunter would be giving up, if any. It, it, well, it would depend on how conditioned Nick is and how big and conditioned Hunter is. Because if Nick is substantially bigger and in very good condition and he outsizes Hunter, and Hunter's in great condition, then to me, I would give that coin toss to, to but do you think? But do you think Nick's condition was better than Hunter's was in Tampa? Because Tampa was – he was – Hunter, I don't think, was fully shredded in Tampa, and I think Nick is harder I, at the I North Americans. both the pictures of Nick and Hunter and everybody at that show looked like dog shit. No. Oh. Because, like, the stage shots from what I saw – like, Nick looked better at the photos that I saw him just standing backstage because the lighting was just a tremendous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, like, you know, like, when he was backstage and it was, like, darker and his tan was dark, to me, he looked more impressive just standing there good than point. on stage because the lights just washed everybody out. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. Why can't we get the fucking lighting right? I think it. I, I don't fucking know. You know, I promote shows, and we always promote our shows in a theater, and I think that's a fucking dramatic difference. I think the only way to get the lighting right is to have the stage lighting be the only lighting on. No, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, at a theater, you have that down lighting, right? Whereas, mm -hmm. whereas what they're doing is they're just putting a stage up, and they're setting up some lights, yes. and you don't get the dramatic effect of, like, a theater yeah. lighting. Mm -hmm. So, um, would you trade the existence of your channel? Your Well, let's skip this one because it's just me. Um, do you guys ever what okay. <laughs> thoughts on CrossFit clowns who drop bars from above their heads even their, even in their warm ups uh, I hate it yeah I can't stand that shit either I think, I think it's annoying I think it's ridiculous and they should go home what are you guys talking about you know the CrossFit you know the CrossFit like the clean and jerk and then they just drop the bar and that's like a rep and it's like just the snatch That's the fucking they, bar. They drop it. They drop it from the yeah. They just drop it, man. Yeah, from like head height, yeah. If I saw somebody drop a weight from my gym from head height, I'd fucking go get out of here. Well, they, that's why they have the rubber plates, right, and the rubber fucking mats and all that shit, so they can do that shit. Like and it bounces. It's set up for that, but it's just annoying as fuck. I'm like, what are you doing, man? Can you just like, can you lift the weight properly? Okay, <laughs> so 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 we all we all agree. Okay. Um, what toppings would you put on a perfect pizza, Nick? Nick, are you, Sausage, Nick, are you Italian? Bacon, pepperoni, ham, a meat lover's pizza, I guess. Guy, what about you? Guy, what about you? <laughs> Nick, are you Italian? Out. Yeah, yeah. Nick's, yeah. Nick's naming every fucking animal on the planet yeah, that yeah. he's throwing. In the <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't say chicken, chicken, beef. Oh, I was next, um, and I just was like, you know what, meat lovers, screw yeah. it. I'm, I'm a, I like fucking. A plain cheese, or ninety nine percent of the time, I get a fucking margarita pie, a real margarita pizza. If you don't know what a real margarita pizza so is, so you're like the authentic Italian guy. Yeah, I order fucking margarita pizza. Okay, I'm like, uh, I'm a, if I'm you gonna, say Domino's, I'm, I'm gonna fucking kill you. No, no, actually, Windsor's known for their pizza. We do a lot of good pizza here, but um, no, I do pepperoni, bacon, uh, mushroom, green pepper is usually my go to. See, that's not like too much on the pizza. It, see, it, that's almost like too. I like thin. But I no, no, no. But I usually do. I don't. I don't go to places that put like a fuck ton of shit on it. And if yeah. they do, I always ask for light toppings. I don't like. You know, some people think like the more toppings they have, the better because they're getting their money's worth. Yeah. yeah. I think it's disgusting. You, I like just to you have one slice and you shit yourself. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't like that shit. I like uh, sparse toppings. Sparse. That's a very <laughs> fucking. <laughs> 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 a 
fuck yourself. <laughs> um, There's that college for you. Dur- during your best off season, how much stage weight did you put on and what was your diet and gear protocol like? So we're not going to go into gear protocols because it's absolutely ridiculous because everybody's different. Uh, so is diet, but we can probably touch on a couple things that we did. Um, Nick, you can start. What's the best, what's the most amount of weight you put on in one good off season? Uh, well, let's see. After US days, I was 237 last year and I got up to about 300 pounds. Yeah. But how much, what stage weight? Like how much was your next stage weight? Oh, well, at uh, North Americans, I got a, I was 246. So, so you put on nine pounds. Yeah. Was, yeah but what's, what's the most stage weight you put on one year? Is that nine pounds? If I had to say solid lean tissue for stage, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What about you, Guy? I'll never forget it. I did uh, my pro debut in 2010, 183. And uh, the following year was when I won my first pro show, and, and I almost didn't make weight to, at 202. I just stripped down to my trunks. <laughs> what? Uh, three to 202, whatever that is. What was? 19. So what was the – so for you, Guy, that was probably just because you were fresh, and it was nothing any, anything dramatic that you did, just because you were new. Yeah, probably. Nick, what was it – like, was there an impactful thing that offseason that made you get that jump? Do you remember? It's just a style of training. And the way we ate. Oh, that was the year you told me you changed everything that year. Yeah. So you went, you pulled back to some lower intensity stuff. We went high intensity, low volume. That low volume, it. low volume. That's what you did. But what did you do eating wise that was different? Just more food. More food. More, more clean food. Isn't that crazy? Most people think more training, more food, and you're like less training, more food, and that's how you got yeah. huge. Yeah. Um, I'm hearing that so much more now, though. And more guys that I talk to do like push pull legs. Oh, I hate that. I can't do that. I can't do that either. So I train six days a week, and like sometimes people like that's too much. Or then then I hear like you guy, you do too much volume. You do, and I'm just like I I just do what I think is enough, and I stop. Like that's how I train. Me and you are very similar, guy. I have learned that five days is better than six. So I, I've been doing six. Yeah, six. When I got the bulk I of my five. when I got the bulk of my injuries, because I used to do five. All right. So what's your? All right. Let me ask you a question. What's what's your split? Uh, well, I have a whole video. It changes all the time. I mean, sometimes because because sometimes I'll hit legs twice in a week. Sometimes I'll hit back twice in a week. Sometimes I'll hit chest twice in a week. It depends what I'm prioritizing. You don't have set days. No. Yeah, Nick. I like, what are your set but days? But they, they move though. Like, like I'll do like. Like chest and shoulders, then I'll do fucking hams and quads, then I'll do uh See arm, I can't how do you arms. do that? Do you, I, See right right now I do I do wait a minute. I don't have an arm day. So Monday I do back. Okay. Tuesday I take off. Wednesday I do chest and biceps. Thursday I do hamstrings. Friday is shoulders and triceps. Saturday I take off and Sunday's quads. So you take Friday and Friday and Tuesday off. Tuesday and Saturday. Tuesday and Saturday off. Okay. What were you gonna say, guy? How do you what? I was gonna. I, how do you like? I can't train quads and hams together, and I'm not saying I. I'm no, no, like, no. But that's why I do. But that's why I do them both, right? So that's why I said hams and quads because my Tuesday workout is predominantly hamstrings, and I'll throw in one quad exercise. Oh, you you do a little touch up, right? Yeah, and then on Saturday, Saturday is okay. my quad day, and I'll throw in a little bit of hands. I do that with my arms. Like when I do yeah. chest, I'll do a little bit of biceps. When I do back, I'll yeah. do a little bit of cut. But yeah, I, yeah. I do Monday is back, and a little bit of tries. Tuesday shoulders, Wednesday's quads, Thursday's chest, a little buys, and uh, Friday's hamstring. Saturday arms, Sunday off repeat. Yeah, I, I you think- train six straight days. Yeah, I was doing that too. That's when I got most of my injuries, man. I honestly think going back to five. I, you know what it is, bro? I don't know. And this might sound crazy. Uh, Fuad, and I know people like, but I don't know how else to fucking do a split. Like, I'll, I, I'll set up for you right now. Listen. No, no, just ready? Can you hear me out? My arms, especially after my surgery, suck a fucking bag of dicks. They're horrible. They doesn't matter. Me. Doing them twice a week is not going to do shit. No, I don't do them twice a week, but I, 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 I refuse to not have just an arm day. You, no, no, you, should, arm you, should, day. you should have an arm day. So listen, hear me out. So, so Monday, right? Monday, back. Tuesday, hams, quads. Uh, Wednesday, 
arms, right? Thursday off, Friday, chest and shoulders, Saturday. Listen, Friday, chest and shoulders, Saturday, quads and, and hams, and then Sunday off. So now you have Thursday and Sunday off. And you hit everything and you had an arm day and you hit legs twice a week. Yeah, but I okay. That's the thing. I don't need to hit legs twice a week. Are you just talking no, about? No, you can just you can, okay, okay. You can just switch that for something else, though. You want to hit? Maybe you want to hit back twice a week. Maybe you want to hit. You know what I mean? I'm just saying. After, that's your, after the podcast, I'll me. I'll call you because you can. I think what a lot of people do is they give shoulders and chest their own day, and they don't need their own day because shoulders and chest work together. Yeah, but that you're. you're that's right. Yeah. But you have to remember, I've had two shoulder surgeries, one shoulder surgery, and fucking like. That's I, even, I can't, but that's, I, and, I, and, and then I had the bicep fucking cut. So for me, I feel like if I don't prioritize shoulders and arms, it's, it's no good for me. No, that's even more reason. Cause I train with a guy, Paul, who's had shoulder surgery. It's even more reason for you to do shoulders and chest together because that way your shoulders aren't going to get banged out twice a week. So when you train chest, your shoulders are doing half the work. I don't care who the fuck you are. Your shoulders are doing half the work. So doing shoulders after chest only makes sense. That way you eliminate a day that you could be doing something else with and you don't oh, have to okay. do. I don't, I don't want to like ruin this podcast. No, no, we're not. I'm sure people are, people are probably right, appreciating so, so like a uh, uh, perfect example on Tuesday, which was yeah. this week, I did seated dumbbell laterals. I did um, the, the front presses seated pausing like the, that. Yeah, yeah, then yeah. Did, um, uh, reverse pec deck for my rear delts. Then I did Smith press. Then I went back and did a um, uh, another rear, and then I did another uh, machine press with alternating grip. And I was done. That's now, a lot chest, of shoulders. That's a lot of shoulders. Chest, how, how the fuck do I do? Okay, let me, let me. Okay, let you me. You could explain. probably cut that in half and look better. Let me explain. So, one, number one, that's a ton of shoulder exercises. Number two, I'll ask you a very simple question. Do you think at 35 or 40, however old you are, that's do a you big think, do, well, I don't know exactly how old you are. <laughs> 38. Do, do you think you're still gaining tons of muscle? No. Nah. Okay. And neither do I. So, when I go to the fucking gym, I'm not like, I need to bang out seven fucking exercises for shoulders. No, I need to stimulate the shit and leave. Yeah, but I, that's the thing. I train until I'm like, are, like, it's I train like I instinct train to where like I'm like all right like I'm good like no I'm good. I'm good. no see you you're like me when I was getting injured like every fucking six months you need uh-huh. to what I do now this is what I would do if I were you right and I'm gonna tell you I mean, you run with the let me down. let me just let me just tell you real quick I, I will you have a training partner that like he doesn't do shit he's no, not there but- he's not there at the time <laughs> he's not there at the time God damn you Paul I can't even fucking defend you bro no no listen so. This is what you do, a full chest workout, right? Four exercises, right? That's my full chest workout. How many exercises do are you doing for chest? I do five. Okay, even five is okay. Well, how many are you doing, guy? You look at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> eight. He does eight. like eight. He does like eight. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you, man? You need to be getting more out of your sets. You, uh, right, but you guys gotta understand something. You realize that I love training more than bodybuilding. Yeah, right? but there's a, yeah, but there's a point of no return. Like, I know. You're so, diminishing yourself, guy. So four exercises. Listen, you bang out four, bang out four chest exercises, right? After your fourth exercise, military. No, you know what? Just wait go, a minute. Go, wait, wait a minute. Go through, go through it. Go through. It. Okay, go fine. Through. I'll go through. I'll fine. I'll go through it. Machine press to start. Incline press. Flat at, press. Yeah, like a machine flat press. I always just to keep just to warm everything up. I always do like a machine press to start. Then I'll do like an incline bench. Right, either a dumbbell, either a dumbbell or barbell. Then I'll do like a flat bench, either on like a Smith or a decline bench, flat or decline, either on a Smith or with a barbell. And then I'll finish with some type of isolation, like a crossover, cable crossover, fly, something like that. After those four exercises, I get into shoulders. I'll do a military press, a lateral raise, and a rear delt, and I'm fucking done because my front delts are already cooked from all the chest shit I did. But do you think if because I even though I have bad shoulders, I still, I, oh, I, I'm, I'm a pressing guy. I like to press. You think I can do all that pressing and still be able to press shoulders afterwards with, with shoulders as bad as yeah. me? Yeah, because we already, established, be we, already, we already established that at 38, you're not trying to build new mounds of muscle. No, no so you no. don't need to go. Like, I don't shoulder press. I used to, I was never as strong as Nick. 
but I used to shoulder press like at my very, very best four plates, most of the time three on a Smith machine. Okay. Now I'm at like two and a half max. See, I did three. Most of the time, I, most of the time I do military press, I'm on a fucking machine. See, I did, I did Smith machine yesterday. I did three plates, no problem. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, <laughs> what I'm saying is you could do chest and then do two and a half plates on a Smith machine military press and still get the same amount of work into your shoulders without having its own shoulder day. All right, I'll make a deal. After this fucking podcast, I'm going to call you. I'm going to write down a split. I'm going to try. If I get my ass kicked at doing the I own your podcast. Uh, <laughs> okay. I think, and Nick would agree with me. I think if you pulled back on the volume, you would probably feel better and look better. Guy, how long do you train for? That's the, that's, it's, it's this funny thing. I train really heavy and very, like, not fast as far as, like, but well, as yeah. far as, short, like, short rest period. You train like Jay, yeah. probably. I, well, like, I, well, I, was, I was training... I trained yesterday with the kid in the gym shoulders and I trained with the kid training legs today and both from like, dude, I, how do you train this fast? And like, I was training fucking like, I went heavy today for yeah. legs. Like, so and I just, for like an hour, hour and a half? About an hour. Um, I, if it's legs about an hour, if I'm, if I'm with a training partner about an hour and a half. That's not bad though. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a lot of reps to fit into an hour and a half, but I, I move, bro. I move. It's like, if you go, a couple breaths, I go. You go, come like I'm go, go, go. Like I go, I go. Yeah. Oh, the longest breaks I take is if I go, like if I gotta take a piss or if I gotta go to the next exercise, or like when I'm in the zone, I fucking go move. That's like, kind of how I do it. I don't I don't like long rest. I don't dick around either, but I, I just like I don't need an hour and a half, but it's also because I'm not doing like for legs, I'm like five exercises. You gotta remember, look at all the fucking volume I'm doing. I could probably get it. No, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Five, You're like, put it like this. Now, okay, is, is this too much for legs today? Two warm-up sets of extensions, four working sets. The last set was a triple drop, 10, 10, 20 reps. And then I went on to do um, – what was right after that? Was it a uh, leg press or was it a squat fucking thing? What the fuck did we do? Oh, we did a leg press. Then we did um, the pendulum squat. And then, oh no! And then we did heavy hack squats, and then I did uh, I finished off with um, we did sissy squats, and I think maybe something else. But I was like pretty much four sets of all that. But so, so Mark, five, how many failure sets do you actually do? I do well, at the end. I do four sets, and the last set is always my burn. Yeah, but wait a minute! But how yeah, many I work? Say, how many... I do four working sets, but I I only count my one failure set. No, but wait a minute! That's the different the distinction. Guy, how many working sets are you doing? I'm doing – when I say four sets, I'm doing four working sets. That's the difference, sets. Nick, because, me, Nick, me and you train similar. What me and Nick do, and correct me if I'm wrong, Nick, but it's more like warm-up, feeder set, working set, failure set. Right? No, um, I, if, I, like, if, I go to, if I go to incline dumbbells, I'll grab 50s, warm up. No, 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 I got it. I got it. What I'm saying well, is, you're... and then once I go to like hundreds or one tens, um, I'm, I'm the one ten, then one thirty, then one forty, 140, one fifty. Like th those are my working sets. Yeah, but your working sets are probably you're going to a certain rep range. You're not stopping at like six until I get to my last one. Then yeah. I do a failure drop. Set. Do you yeah. keep Do you keep the same rep range throughout? Like would you I, do one I like, say, say you wanted to hit a top set of eight. So do you like do one tens for eight, one thirties for eight? No, if I'm one fifty, you fail at eight for eight, and I can bang out twelve or. 15 i'll bang out 12 or 15 yeah see nick he's doing full working sets he's You're not going, okay he's not doing he's not doing like a warm-up and then yeah, yeah. a feeder and then a failure I don't, this might you guys might laugh at me i don't even know what the fuck you're talking about okay this is a <laughs> this, this is a i'll tell you what a feeder you know, is i'm just Listen. old school like i just fucking train no no no, no, no. Oh, so, yeah. so so am i but so am i but i'll just describe to you right so if i'm benching let's say i'm doing dumbbell press warm up warm up 80 pounds or 60 pounds right 60 let's say 60 feeder 80 feeder 100 feeder 120 working set 130 failure set 140 so when i say feeder well, how, many, how many reps are that's you what I'm saying. Yeah, how many reps that, are you doing that, your feeder? that's what i'm saying when i say feeder it's like five reps maybe six it just i'm just feeling the muscle and then drop i feel like if i did that i would be i would i would end up doing the fucking 200 i'd be fucking doing 200 pound incline presses that's the whole fucking what the fuck's wrong with that that's the point. Well, I. <laughs> What's wrong with that? 
I'm just saying my show, like I feel that's why, and I never do a, I never do a press. I always start every, like when I do chess, I'm always doing a fly before a press because I, this might, and I'm Nick, you're way stronger than me. I'm not tooting my own horny, but for my little ass with my injuries, I'm still way too strong for my own good. And I feel like if I didn't pre-exhaust and do the rep range that I did, I would end up grabbing heavy of a weight and being able to do it and doing, and, doing something stupid. Yeah. I think well, that's why you I, gotta I, control the weight. I think you'd be less injured if you weren't doing so much shit. I honestly think if you train the way I did a little bit, you probably wouldn't have as many injuries. Well, so you guys train the same is what you're saying, you and Fuad. I think from what Nick has described to me, like, because I don't, like, what you're doing is you're doing a working set on every weight. Yes. So, like, if you can do 100-pound dumbbells for 10 or 15, you're doing 10 or 15. A hundred percent. Yeah. So you're doing, I, fa- you're doing failure sets. Yes. Yeah. No, yeah, we, so yeah. that's not, that's how I used to train. And then I took, then John, when John took over, when my body actually started to get better, John was like, look, man, your fucking last set is your failure set. The set before that is a 90 percenter. Everything before that is a fucking warm up. It's just, yeah. a, it's just acclimating your muscle to the last, you're just getting your muscle well, you ready. Know for, something too, and I also, you know, Charles does a lot of my workouts. So I fucking, call Charles, get my workouts and bing, bang, boom. But he doesn't tell me what my split is also. You know? It seems just, it seems, just seems like a lot of volume. It seems like a lot, a lot of volume. You know, it's just, it's, it's what I've always done. Yeah. But you're right. Okay. I, I know it. I, I've been changing. If, I don't know if you guys have paid attention, but my rep tempo is nowhere near what it used to be. I slowed down substantially. That makes a big difference too for me. I, know, I, that had to, I had no choice. You know what? I, I feel the muscle more doing it that way. Of course. Nick, I was, you're, Nick, you're an anomaly, bro. You handle weight with such perfect control. It's like I, I watch you lift and I'm like, yeah. it makes no sense. Yeah, but the guy, I, I, you know what you were saying earlier about doing the 200s and getting injured? You know how I stay away from that? Because when I do the 130s now for dumbbell press or 140s, I, I have way more control. So 140 feels fucking way heavier for me now than it did 10 years ago. Cause 10 years ago, I just like, you know, you're banging yeah, it out as fast bah, as you can. Bah, bah, yeah. Bah. Now I'm like kind of control everything. So yeah, I, I, don't, see, I, I, don't, I don't need to, I don't need to go to 160, 170. I can't, I can't do that. I can't even do that weight with the same form. Do you want to, you, here, I'll tell you something that's kind of off what you said. So, and this isn't, I'm not knocking myself. I mean, maybe it's a knock. But remember when you said when you qualified for Olympia, you were on a high and you kind of didn't want to like um, disappoint anybody or, or fucking let anybody down because you're right. Like, I'm not I'm not known as like a freaky bodybuilder, but I'm known for more of like how I fucking train. Yeah, I feel like train if hard, I fucking yeah. train that way, then I'm that's people are gonna be like, who the fuck is this kid? Okay, but wait, a minute. You, you know you sound like me because like that's how I thought. Like, so now when you see my videos, they're not like it used to be. I used to. Not that I ever trained heavy, but there was more intensity. Yeah. Now it's like a little more fluffy shit, but people get it. Like they know I'm not a pussy. They're just like, okay, he's older. He can't train the way he used to train. He's got to make adjustments. And then people start following you for other reasons. They're like, okay, well, this is how you got to transition. And I know that's like a shitty thing to fucking hear because you're like, well, I'm not fucking old. I can still do the shit I used to oh, do. But dude, listen, I know I'm getting there, bro. Okay. But I'm like, but I had to learn the hard way. I kept tearing muscles till finally I was like, okay, you know what? Pete, I can knock on wood. I haven't to- knock like, on wood. Honestly, I looked at like I looked at myself in the mirror and I'm like, I, I'm like, you win. I'm like, I give up. You win. And like it was because it was like it was my lat, and then it was my fucking quad, then it was my hamstring, then it was like, I'm like, I fucking tap out, motherfucker. No more heavy shit for me. Yeah. So it just happens, man. It's like, but I don't think. I don't think fan like I think we have a fucking really skewed reality of why people follow us. Like Nick is still pretty new, so maybe he hasn't developed a personality yet that people will really want. Maybe he has. He does like Nick, you put out a lot of stuff, so you, you probably have yeah, but, but like guy, for me and you, I don't think people are following us because we're amazing bodybuilders or we or or we're breaking records in the gym or any shit like that, right? So it's like yeah. It's not like people are going to stop following you because you don't fucking do 30 sets in a workout. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, but you get where I'm coming from. I get it. hundred percent. Yeah. Because yeah. It's, it's hard to, it's hard to let go. 10 years ago when I was 28 and yeah. just doing my, it's like, they, and, but because back then Fred, nobody gave a fuck about what we did in the gym. 
on when it was filmed because this shit yeah. didn't exist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now yeah. there's a persona we have to uphold because well, of the, you know. But it's not. It's also internal too. I mean, it's how you identify yourself. Absolutely. Because when people say like, when you think of how people see you, you think Fuad. People think of Fuad as the hard training motherfucker. Yes. So I don't want to be a pussy. So I better go train hard. So people keep thinking of Fuad as a hard trainer. And, and, yeah. and, and that's like gets instilled. Dude, like Branch, <laughs> I got to go to Dallas on Saturday to film a gas, but I'm not, no, I'm going to train with Branch. And Branch still trains the same fucking way. Yeah. Yeah. But not really. But not really. He's not as heavy, but he's yeah. still like, is this intensity? Like, yeah, I still have that, but that, that'll never go away. I still have the same intensity. Like, I just trained with a guy on Saturday, right? And uh, a guy I don't usually ever train with. He's a friend of mine, and he comes up with me. And honestly, I thought it was a shitty workout. My back's bothering me. I tweaked something in my low back. You want too heavy? No, 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 no. I, not that workout. It was before. Something in my back has been fucking bothering me the, oh. last, the last few weeks. So Saturday we go, and I'm like, okay. I, I told him ahead of time. I'm like, look, I probably can't go really heavy. My back's all fucked up. So I thought it was like a kind of a, a, a weaker workout. And I was only on – I was really depleted because I've been on 30 grams of carbs for like the whole week. This guy got buried. Dude, he told me today, he's like, I still can't walk. I'm like, <laughs> I trained legs today. I'm like, I already had another leg day. Like, so – it's amazing, isn't it? What I'm saying is I don't think the intensity ever goes away. I think just the weight has to come down. Yeah. Right? Like, I don't yeah. think – so, anyway. Um, does DECA have any real therapeutic positive effects on joints, or is it really just a – is it just from water retention? Either of you know the answer to that? I take it because I'm made to believe it helps my joints. Does it? Don't know. But when I do take it, I take like I'll just take like if I'm on whatever cycle, I'll take 200 migs. I don't like, take just, just just to just because I they say it's good for your joints. I get it from my doctor, so it's like I I haven't taken that in a couple of years now. I take literally 100 if I'm whatever, no matter what what I'm on, like pre contest off season, I always do a half and a half a week just for, because I have horrible shoulders. I don't take any Deca because you feel it helps. Dude, you want to know something? I don't know fucking, I, no matter whether it's underground or pharmaceutical or from the doctor, whether it's Anadrol, Trend, Test, Masron, I, it, I don't know what fucking really works and what doesn't. Because my strength, people say like, oh, this makes me stronger. I don't, I can't fucking ever tell. Yeah, I have no. Fu I'm one of those guys. Like, I don't know if you guys can really tell. I've never taken something been like that. That when I take this, it makes me really angry. I can tell. I can tell. I can tell. I can't. Yeah, like if I take Trani, I can feel a, a strength difference. I MPP makes me really strong. I can't take any Decas because they fuck with my anxiety. I get really bad anxiety whenever I'm on anxiety when I'm on Decas, even whether it's MPP or regular Deca. I can't. Oh, you know, I've been having really bad anxiety. I wonder if that fucking dude. Anxiety. My mood, like that, sex you know, like drive, like sex day, drive was, anxiety, everything. I was on the phone and I was like, my buddy's like, "You're right." I'm like, "Just give me a minute." He's like, "What's going on?" I go, and "My anxiety just kicked. My heart would just like all of a sudden just start like like, and I would be like anxious and be like." Whew. Yeah, I don't. Uh, that's why I don't use deck. I don't know if that's I, maybe that's maybe it's from that. Yeah. Um, it's like you old fucks. <laughs> You guys, man, you are old. We're going to start acid reflux next. <laughs> I'm young and fresh right now. Um, what do each of you think your personal weak point is, and how do you plan to bring it up? Nick, you can start there. You're, you're the most confident of the three of us, so you tell me what your weak points are. I think right now, the main one that sticks out the most to me is my chest. Okay. I didn't see that, but okay. Um, I do. I think my back's come up a lot. I, so I, I think that was actually one of my stronger points at North Americans. I think my legs are a pretty strong point. Arms are obviously a strong point. I, I just, I think my chest thickness lacks compared to the, the other body parts. Okay. Guy, and that, act, that might be due to training too heavy. So I might have to lower the weight a little bit and contract harder. Yeah. So, so. chest, chest and back. Chess primarily, though. Yeah. Guy, what do you think? About sure. me? Yeah, what's your biggest weak point? Uh, my back. My back, it's my back's probably one of the most peeled backs in the 212. 
but mm. I, I lack width and thickness. Uh, mine's my stomach. I have thick obliques and the blocky waist makes everything else look really shitty. So simple. Okay, I guess we'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> now, almost, now all of us are depressed. We can move on yeah. with the show. <laughs> well, okay, guys. Um, do you guys suffer from sleep apnea? Yes, I have a sleep no. apnea. Next question. Nick, do you? Nope. nope. Really? Even at 300 pounds, nope. you don't fucking you have no trouble sleeping? Motherfucker. I have to sleep like a baby. Nick's built for this shit. Um, would you rather have to swing your arms over your head with every step you take or fart really loud with no smell every time you sit down? Say it again. Fart. <laughs> How do, like, I want to go with fart. It scares me, the people that fucking... Wait, just, see your, just listen. To, I want to see what your guy says. Would you rather have to swing your arms over your head with every step you take or fart really loud with no smell every time you sit down? A fart. A fart. <laughs> It doesn't uh, stink. So I'm come on, though, man. What about okay? Yeah, you can watch. I could. You could always do one of these. Like if he stands up to go to sit, <clears throat> but it's really loud. Like people are gonna hear it. That's all right. They can hear it. They won't smell it though. It's cool. So if you're at the doctor's office, room full of fucking, the lobby's full. You don't care. You're just gonna sit down. I'm going fucking... to laugh my ass off. <laughs> oh, you know what? I would sit down. I sit down and go squeaky floor. <laughs> So at the barber shop, at the fucking car dealership, everywhere. Yeah, walking everything. around like you're on fucking like <laughs> like fucking. No, you can be like I'm exercising, right? Like. Well, like the bushwhacker. Yeah, the, you can that fucking. That looks incredibly <laughs> stupid doing that all day. Yeah, but you're gonna be. <laughs> it's every time you walk, you don't sit down all day, but you're constantly walking. So. How annoying would that be? What about like a job interview? You go to a job interview, they're like, Nick, can you sit down, please? You're I would like, be like, can you leave the room with that? I'll sit. <laughs> Hell no. I'll sit right down. Like, do you hear that? <laughs> There's no smell, though. <laughs> uh, I'm like, I got di I'm diagnosed with a disease. <laughs> yeah, it's called every time I sit, I fart. <laughs> uh, um. If your six meals a day had to be selected from the menu of one fast food chain for the rest of your career, which would you pick? Me and me and Guy have already been down this road. Yeah. So Nick, what would Nick, what would you pick if you had to pick a fast food chain to get all your meals from? Um, five guys. Really? Yeah, you could do that actually. You just have fucking yeah. just eat the patty all fucking day long. And they got the, the potatoes are the potatoes are real too. Yeah. Yeah, you could fucking do that. But there's no variety though. You just eat beef like every meal. That's all right. I get a hot dog. Yeah, they have hot dogs too. That's pork. Hot dog no, most hot dogs are baked. They got grilled cheese sandwiches. Yeah, they got grilled cheese sandwiches. I think I do McDonald's. Put a lot of slices on that piece of bread to get your protein, buddy. I think I do McDonald's. What? Yeah. Wait, so we don't agree on this. No, I didn't say we agree. I said we've been here before, and you you hate me because I love McDonald's. It's so fucking dirt. It's such just bullshit, <laughs> disgusting, trash. Food. It's so delicious. It's fucking amazing. I, yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it's what, would, what would you pick, guy? Bro, what? What would you pick? What would you pick? Chick Fil A, easy. Chick Fil A. Yeah. I was gonna go Chick Fil A, but I think I'd get tired of chicken before I get tired of beef. Yeah, but there's chicken. They also have grilled chicken there, too, and fried chicken. And they got spicy chicken and the original. And you get the little nuggets, so you get the strips. And they got yeah, Diet Lemonade, which is off five the guys, Five Guys has a million different toppings. And Five Guys has milkshakes, too. And, so yeah. Chick-fil-A. And they got Cajun fries. Yeah. And Five Guys has beef. So beef. So that fucking wins. That trumps everything. I'll get a fucking – I'll get a huge real quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh your favorite pre workout meal. Um probably protein powder, cream of rice, and almond butter. Really? That'll give me a stomach ache. Really? That's easy digestion. Yeah. No, I think the I'm not a big fan of mixing my cream of rice with my protein powder. Nor am I. I'm right there with you. Yeah. Really? I love yeah. it. It's good. Yeah. 
yeah, it doesn't. So I have a separate. For some reason, it doesn't sit with me well. I like chicken and rice, honestly, to be honest, to like chicken rice with coconut oil digest super quick for me but it doesn't it, like it doesn't wear off in the middle of my workout i like protein cream of rice but i don't put it in the cream of rice and i like to do uh it, depending on the on what day I, I like off season like i'll a lot of times have a muffin too on certain days with that meal my stomach's so fucking sensitive i think that's why i started the Ooh, show with the I'll put some blueberries in there too that's blueberries fun. Blueberries. Oh, I do. I do. I do a couple of frozen berries every morning. Yeah, you gotta. Uh, you gotta. Well, that's that's my meal from the fucking uh, muscle and strength videos. I do the fucking bowl of cream of rice. Yeah, I've seen the it. The cinnamon and the fucking Splenda and the peanut butter and then a, a cup of blueberries and the frozen blueberries yeah. cool off the fucking cream of yeah, rice. They oh. have to be frozen. It's beautiful. So I have seen. See, Nick, this is when it's. This is how you pay attention and you fucking call people out on their bullshit. Ready? I'm going to show you how this is done. <laughs> who had just, who had just, just, this is why everybody can make fun of all the court shows that I watch, but this is how simple the life is for me. Who had just prefaced when he asked you with, I have a very sensitive stomach. So that meal wouldn't sit well with me, but he just tried to tell me that McDonald's is like a fucking delicacy. Yeah. And but I didn't say it helped my stomach. I just said it tastes great. Yes. But you said you would eat it for the rest. If you could pick one place to eat, and then you're telling me that you like, so that if you can eat McDonald's and be okay, you have an iron stomach. Okay. Well, I'm just fucking with you. I think I would probably go with Nick because I love five guys, but I had to pick McDonald's because of variety. I'm a big variety guy, man. What about after bodybuilding? Oh no, that show so was just. So when you go to McDonald's and you eat, are, yeah. are you sick or do you have like the shits afterwards? I feel great, man. So how do you, how do you have a sensitive stomach? Because I have a sensitive stomach pre-workout. <laughs> <laughs> that was the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> His stomach gets nervous before he trains. I like to, my stomach likes to feel very calm you when know. I'm fucking training. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking idiot. Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, because like, no, because look, normally if I'm going to oh, get me right now, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> If I'm going to get McDonald's, it's usually a cheat meal. And it's usually like meal five or six. So I'll eat the fucking McDonald's, whatever amount of McDonald's I eat. And then I'll go to sleep. And when I wake up in the morning, my stomach's fine. But I wouldn't, but I wouldn't eat like 25 bucks with McDonald's and then go fucking work out. Because you cheat yourself. That's right. But if I go to sleep, I wake up in the morning, my body's digested it and I'm good to go. Start the next day. You shit blood but as soon as you wake no, up. No, I'm totally fine. Totally fine. There's maybe some, <laughs> there might be some sesame seeds in there from the Big Mac bun, but other than that. <laughs> like, Big Mac bun. <laughs> You're fucked up, guy. Uh, now I'm craving cream of rice with berries. Holy fuck, that's a good meal. You that's know, a great I think, meal. I think I will eat that breakfast for the rest of my life. Eggs, cream of rice with blueberries and cinnamon splenda and peanut butter it's the fucking best you, if you it's like the the blueberries, try this one day doesn't it, ezekiel bread whatever kind of toast you want yeah okay. toast yeah put a natural just peanut butter on it yeah and put a ton of frozen blueberries on the peanut butter and then put another piece of toast it, and it's it's like a cold but hot peanut butter and jelly sandwich it's fucking awesome that sounds like it could be good i'm gonna try Very that. good all right, that I'm gonna sounds try really good, actually. I'm going to try that. All right. All right, we'll do a couple more, guys. Um, let's see. If the end goal is to be huge, would you recommend bulking for a few years and not flip-flopping between cutting and bulking, keeping the focus on growth over a long period of time? Yes. No. No. What? He's saying, basically, should he just stay in a, like a never-ending bulk if he wants to get huge? No, you got to go on a deficit. I think, I think, honestly, I think competing helps you get big because your fucking body rebounds from that shit and you gain, like... My best gains are from my rebound. You're just getting big in general. Well, he's just saying if the end goal is to be huge, why not just bulk for, like, four or five years instead of competing and cutting and all this stuff? And I think... Your body loses the sensitivity. That's right. I think there's a period of, like, oversaturation. Where, like, even if you don't get ready for a show, it's still good to do, like, a four- to six-week cut and then go back to, to bulking really hard. Yeah, I'm saying yeah I agree. Two years and – or this guy, you're talking about bulking straight and never doing any – Yeah, kind of 
Yeah, that's what he's talking about. He's saying, why not just keep bulking and stay in a surplus? I was just talking about bulking and just not doing a show, not like cutting back, never cutting back calories. Yeah, no, he's saying that he's just not saying a show. He's just saying why flip flop between cutting and bulking. And I'm saying, no, yeah, yeah, then I agree. You need to yeah. have a definite. Something. Yeah, I think it's good to catch a rebound even if you don't do a show. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, let's see. Our muscles coming back faster natural to a certain degree when you were enhanced years ago. Well, let's forget that question. It's for me, I think. Um, do you have to be sore the next day to ensure that you had a good workout session? No. How do you measure, how do you measure your workouts, Nick? What do you mean? Like, how do you measure the success of your workout if it's not soreness? Um, I like to go by how good my pump was. Okay. So if you, if you train excuse me if you train and you don't get a good pump you you feel like it wasn't a good workout kind of yeah especially in the off season yeah especially in the off season yeah yeah i agree guy what do you think what's the measurement for you well i wouldn't say i you could say the pump but i base it on how i feel leaving the gym i don't base it on how i feel the next day i base it on how i feel when i am done training i agree with both of you but i also because i'm a fucking meathead i need to feel sore the next day even if it's just not sore, even if it's just tight. I mean, I'm always sore, but I don't yeah. feel like if I'm more sore on one day than the other, I feel like I didn't do anything in the gym. No, no, I'm not. I don't measure the degrees of soreness, but I need to feel like the muscle worked. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when I'm leaving the gym, if my if I'm like today, I left the gym, my legs, I was fried. Yeah. So I'm, whether I'm sore or not tomorrow, I was. I know I was fucking fried walking out of that gym to my car. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so if I'm sore, great. If I'm not, then. It's not like I didn't do a lot because I did a lot today. So you guys are measuring the success of your workouts more during, like around the time when you work out and not, okay. Because a lot of people measure, yeah. a lot of people measure my, by soreness. Yeah. Like, oh, like, oh, like, you know, you hear that all the time. Like, oh, I couldn't walk for five days. And they, it means they had a great leg workout. Right? Sometimes I feel like if you're sore that long, you probably overdid it. That's how I feel. I, see, I used to be the guy who was sore for six days. And then on the seventh day, I would be ready to go again. And then I would be sore again for six more days. Yeah. And it wasn't, it wasn't yeah, until. I don't know how you can judge it by the next day. It's like, I, like you, Fuad, you know me, my analogy is like, you don't know how fast a car is till it goes around the track and it's time. So you don't know how good of a workout, like you don't know how good of a leg workout you had until it's the leg workout's done. You're not until the next day. No, but that's how, but that's why I'm saying I agree with both of you. Cause I agree with Nick. Cause uh, I do, if I don't get a pump, I get upset especially like in the off season, right? When I'm dieting, not so much. Yeah. Um, and I also, I'm like you guy where like when I leave, if I don't feel like I, I left it all on the gym floor, then I'm like, you're a pussy. Yeah. Um, but the third component for me is I like to feel sore the next day, but, but Nick is right. If you're sore for more than like two or three days, you probably fucking did way too much. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Guys, uh, this, this whole thing is making me think I do too. Everybody says it now. I'm like, you do do too much guy. I think you should, you know, <laughs> you know what I try to focus on guy. Cause I don't know if you're like me when I go to the gym, man, it's like somebody turned the fucking lights out. Dude. I, I call it flip the switch. The switch goes on and I, that's it. I call it con controlled chaos. It's like eyes closed. Like it's like everything just goes blurry. And I train I for an, I do what I do for what in the gym where I put my hat like this. No, and no, I no. Let me finish though. But this is the problem. This is the problem. Right? So what I'm trying to describe is, that thing that we do is fucking fun, but it's not beneficial. Yeah. Because when I do, uh, when I do have my eyes open and it's not controlled chaos and I am focused on what I'm doing, I get more out of less sets than just trying to get through the sets. Yeah. Right. Cause like in the past I'd be like, okay, I got to go in. I'm going to do fucking six exercises. I'm going to take 30 second rests. I'm going to do fucking blah, 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 blah. And I wouldn't fit. I wouldn't leave the gym till I completed all the list. Did you always have a list that you did prior to entering the gym? No, the list is in my head, but I meant figuratively. There's a list, right? No, no. Like, I meant like, did you have your workouts planned out prior to walking in the gym? No, it's kind of like I would get the. Right. I had a, I had an idea. Like I'm. I had today, an idea. Of what I yeah, to do yeah. That, yeah. Like today, I went to the gym. I'm like, okay, today I know I'm gonna hack squat. I'm gonna pendulum squat. I'm gonna leg press, That's and then I, I just do everything else around it, right? But um, but. What I'm saying is when I became more present, instead of just trying to complete the list and like, okay, I'm, I'm pendulum squatting now. 
this is my failure set. This is the one I need to get the most out of. I actually can do less volume and still feel the same pump, the same effort when I left the gym and the same soreness the next day. So you need to almost let go of that. Like, Oh, I'm crazy in the gym and like almost scale back a bit and focus on each set. It's hard, man. And I know it sounds ignorant. It's fucking hard to do. Well, because it's fun to do it the other way. Trying to calm down in an environment where I don't want to be calm is not easy. No, no, no. Listen, it's fun. Like the, what the thing that me and you do like that crazy, like turn crazy music on and close your eyes and just fuck go ape shit. Yeah. That's fun. I love that shit. But, but I had to find a way to get more out of my body. So See, I, it's hard for me to do by myself because when I'm by myself, I don't have any, if I'm with my training partner, I'm like, yo, I got to fucking cool it. Like, so you got to like, tell me to chill. So if I go to, if I start stacking weights on my, like, you know, they go, no. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. If I'm yeah. by myself. And a lot of times I am, all I need is a fucking spot. And I'm, it's like, I'll do whatever the fuck I want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if I don't have somebody controlling me in the gym and be like, yo, you need to scale back. That's my issue. Mm-hmm. Um, is there anything X's and O's wise that you wish you would have known going into your first competitions? <laughs> anything you learned or should have known or did wrong in your going into your first shows that you remember? Yeah, nobody told me there was anything called quarter turn, so I stood there like a complete douche knuckle and just <laughs> like a fucking asshole. Literally stood. What do you mean they call they called quarter turn? What happened? I went like this. I had I had the fucking video. I was like this. They they called this. And my legs are gonna cramp. I could feel it. I stood there like this. They said quarter turn. I literally went like this. <laughs> so you knew you, you knew. <laughs> I did this, and then I remember doing this. Like they said quarter turn this way. And I saw the guy in front of me like this. And yeah, yeah. the tape go like this. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking clueless. Like a complete asshole. That's so great. <laughs> so, yeah, I didn't know. Nobody, I knew all the poses, but <laughs> nobody told me there was quarter turns involved. Nick, do you remember any dumb shit you did from your first prep? Uh, too much cardio. Yeah, that seems to be a normal What did you one. weigh your first show, Nick? 159 pounds. When the, when was that? 2017. Oh no, I'm sorry. 2012. 2012. 2012. Yeah, you gotta you gotta hear this story, wait, guy. Wait, 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 wait. You went from 2017, 159 pounds. No, 2012 was 159. Oh, he definitely said 2017. I did. I fucked up. My okay. I was about to say you weren't my fucking idol. No. Um. Okay, would you re- okay, we'll take this as the last question because I know we're all dieting and tired. Would you rather be classic Op- Olympia champion or place top six in the open shows but never make the Olympia? That's not a good question. That's a horrible That's question. That's a shitty fucking question. Classic well, Olympia. Why the fuck would you not want to be Okay, let me let me rephrase the question so it's cooler. Would you rather <laughs> would you rather be classic Olympia champion or place top six in the open bodybuilding Olympia top six in the open bodybuilding Olympia. So Nick, you would rather be sixth in the open than be first in the classic. Yeah. I don't want to be classic. Yeah. I think I agree. Guy, what about you? You're two twelve, So you can go either way. What do you think? Oh, oh wow. Just fucking throw that. <laughs> out. I was going to say the same thing, but okay. So here I'm going to do this. My answer for a bodybuilder is I'd rather be top six. What's in the your open. answer? Don't say that shit. My answer is Mr. Olympia in classic because Mr. Olympia in classic physique is going to make a very, very, very substantial amount of money. Just like Chris Bumstead. I'm sure he's doing very well with what he's got going on. And I think somebody who's top six in the Olympia as an open competitor is not nearly monetizing what a classic Olympia winner is. So that my answer that's why I said there's a bodybuilding answer and then there's a business answer. I'm going to crush your answer because I love debating with you, guy. Well, you can find, but get ready to be completely fucking <laughs> sick. Bamboozled than Mr. Miyagi, so go the ahead. Mos- the monetization that Chris Bumstead is, is enjoying is not because he's a classic Olympia winner. It's because he's fucking Chris Bumstead. Because even if he was second, third, or fourth, he would still be monetizing all that fucking money. I agree. Because in the in the in the uh, okay, case so for that, I'm, wait, wait, I haven't laid out my case yet. 
And the case I'm making is when Breon was classic Olympia champion, he wasn't monetizing the, the same way that Chris is. So Facts. it's not, it's not just because he's classic Olympia. It's because he's Chris Bumstead. Go ahead. You have the floor. Personality. <laughs> yeah, but what, you, but we're not saying you that doesn't mean anything. I have, I have the fans that I have, not because I'm a great bodybuilder. I suck. I'm, I have the fans that I have because I have personality. You're telling me. Yeah, but if, you don't look like Chris Bumstead. I, but I, the guy's a fucking model for fuck's sake. Yes, sakes. but okay, but okay, before, yeah, true or false, before he was classic Olympian, he had less than 500,000 on Instagram. Now he has substantially over a million. No, no, it's That's, because it's because he was climbing. It's not because it became classic bullshit, Olympian because champion. Because when fucking, when Sean Roden, Turned fucking Mr. O. Different, he different thing. He, the next day, he had over a million. Different thing. Different thing. It's a different thing. Chris, look at Reagan's at a million, right? Chris and Reagan are the same person. Yes. Right. Chris was on his way to a million, regardless of winning the Olympia or not. I promise I you. I promise you that. I promise you okay, that. But here, oh, for, hold on. From a, you're telling me from a, a monetization business standpoint, you think somebody taking top, top six at the Olympia in the open is going to monetize, monetize in this sport better than somebody that wins an Olympia in any division? I'll tell you this. Monetization depends on the person, not on the placing. That's why and, I and, said for me, it would be classic because I know my personality. And if I know if I won a title like that, what it would bring me. So I yeah, know. But wait a minute. But that can happen. But that, what I'm saying is that can happen in any genre. Look at Flex Lewis, right? If Flex Lewis takes six in the Olympia this year, He's still going to be monetizing the fuck out of that. It's yeah, not going to be. Of course he is, but Flex also is going to be monetizing that because he came from the 212, now breaking into the open class, and Flex has already fucking won seven Mr. O's at 212. That's a poor example. Okay, that's a bad example. I'll give you that one. But, <laughs> yeah, okay, that's a bad example. I'll, I'll definitely give you that. All I'm saying is the, the fact that your classic Olympia champion doesn't, necessarily mean you're going to make money no but like you okay you know who you are do yeah. you not think if you had a mr olympia title for it, it that mr olympia title in front of your name could i monet could i monetize the fuck that, out that's of gonna bring you so many more fucking fans right off the bat yeah and yeah, you knowing yeah. who you are you would monetize off that because you know what you do on social media what you bring to the table somebody like breon or somebody maybe like hunter who's like doesn't really say much and is quiet maybe they wouldn't monetize I know I would. So you, I see what you're saying. So Breon is an example of, well, I shouldn't say what not to do because I don't know exactly what his, his social media is like because I, I don't study it. So I shouldn't say anything. I don't want to say anything poor about it. But Well, Breon's also an actor. You know that, right? He's been on a lot of like, he was on like, a, he was a movie actor. You know, he's been in a lot of movies. All, right? I, what I'm saying without, I don't want to discount Breon because it's, it's really not just Breon. It's anybody else in the classic. Nobody in classic is monetizing the way Chris is. That's why I don't think, but that's why I don't think it has anything to do with classic because Regan, who is, okay, Regan's a good example. There you go. Regan's probably, let's say Regan at his very best could be top six, top eight, top 10 at the Olympia. He's monetizing the fuck out of his shit. Yeah. He's yeah. also monetizing as a classic competitor too. He's not, not because he's classic. <laughs> don't give me that shit. He's, he's that's this that's a perfect example there we go you know what basically what we've just figured out is it's fucking irrelevant what division you're in if you can monetize you can monetize it depends on you and who you are yeah, I, that, well that's what i that's exactly what i said no it's not what you said was the classic I olympia said, guy I is going to make I more monetize money if i was mr olympia because i know how many fans it would bring me and with my personality and who i am on social media i know if i'm making x now and I was Mr. Olympia, and I got, let's say, 500,000 more fans, that 500,000 more fans is going to monetize, whether it's website, whether it's seminars, whether it's meet and greets. Yeah, I, come, I think you're 100% wrong. You think Sean Roden did a good job monetizing his Olympia, his, his additional followers? No. Sean, I love you, but no. See? No. Listen, man, the person, the person I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, guy. I'll tell you well, what, guy. Did, but, but the person, I'll tell you what, also, the person Sean, you are. The ones are very quiet, closed off, doesn't say much. That's the, per, the person you are now. The monetization you have now is exactly the same as it would be if you were better. 
you're already tapping what you have. So, wait, so you're saying that your followers on social media platforms doesn't convert into monetization. Is that what you're saying? What I'm saying Hold to on, you is, is, is that, I'm, I'm going to answer your question. I'm going to answer your question. Is it yes or no? It's, no, it's a yes not a no. yes or no. No, it's not a yes or no. There is a certain percentage that will monetize. Yes. So what I'm saying is when it comes to Sean Roden, okay, you said that you gave the example, he had 500,000, then all of a sudden he had a million. I guarantee you those extra 500,000 people that came on board didn't buy shit from him because they only came there because he's Mr. Olympia, not because they liked him. I, I'm not disagreeing with that whatsoever. Okay, so then it doesn't matter what if you're I'm Mr. Olympia or not. You're, the people that are paying I, I, for you are going to pay for you regardless. Yes, but what I'm saying is, uh, if, okay, true or false, you don't think some people followed Sean because he was Mr. Olympia and really never and, and didn't know who he was? Or do you think everybody that followed Sean knew who Mr. Olympia was? No, no. I think there was a select group of people that were following Sean because they knew who he was. Yeah. And then a shitload of people came on after he became Mr. Olympia, but they're not invested in him. They no, only want to follow him. When, when they follow you, that is when you as the either entertainer or the bodybuilder, you have to let those people under, you have to make them fans of you. And in order to do that, you have to have a personality. And I'm saying for me, I think I would monetize very well if I was a Mr. Olympia classic or whatever. Because I think the way we do it, we base everything off of, off of followers on social media. The more followers we have, the more fans we have, the more our fans buy our stuff. So, yes, do I think in some way, shape, or form for monetization purposes for this industry, does an, a follower number mean something? Unfortunately, yes, I believe it does. Okay. All right. We'll leave it at that. I'll, get, I'll, I'll let you win that one, guy. You're a real son of a bitch. <laughs> All right, we're going to wrap up because Nick looks tired and hungry. And I don't want to see Nick. I'm good, there. bro. Yeah. Um, it's okay. We've been on for almost two hours now. So, uh, guys, look, I appreciate you coming on, man. My normal, my normal crew. I don't know if I even have a normal crew, but the other guys are fucked up and dieting and harder than we are. So, yeah, and James I'll and start being the normal crew. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna be rotating people like more and more. I think people like that. So, but listen, yeah. I appreciate I appreciate you guys coming on, man. We had fun. So, absolutely, uh, we'll do it again. And Nick, keep dieting hard. I'll see you in a couple of weeks, hopefully. And Guy, good luck at the yes, Olympics. Oh, thanks. I won't we talk will. to you for twelve weeks. Okay, for I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> 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 All right, fuck you both. I gotta I'll go. Be eat. Back to you actually in two seconds about okay. this whole workout. All right. All right, we'll talk. Okay, guys. Bye. See you All later, right. man. Bye bye. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, share with your friends, and like the video. And if you get a chance, check out the description for all the different links to all the different places you can find Hostile and myself. And lastly, check out Hostile.com for our new line of supplements and all of our apparel and gear. Thanks again for watching.